So we have been looking at the will of God and stressing how personal it is. And it is individual, though God has a general will, a sovereign will. And you know that all falls right into uh, Sunday night. We're talking about God's schedule. Uh, God has time. Uh, uh, works through dispensations. He um, changes the times and seasons. He, you know, individually, individually, God has created us so that our lives have times and seasons. You know, pretty amazing how. And when you study men of the Bible like Moses, you know, 40 years in Egypt, 40 years on the mountainside, 40 years leading God's people. Um, you study David, we're going through David's life, and Barak has, he's going to get uh, 12 key events, and creation all around us, the seasons, uh, everything points to how God works through seasons, in seasons. I read a message many years ago. How, uh, Spurgeon was talking about how in the ministry, it, it didn't, uh, message really encouraged me. He's, he's just saying in the ministry, I've seen like famine, drought, times when what is, you know, nothing, and then uh, plenty and harvest and um, different seasons. Life is different seasons. And uh, through it all, God shows his will. He has a will. And um, he has his general will, his, his sovereign will uh, for the events of the world. But he has an individual will. You know, it's God's will for, it was God's will for you to be a teenager. Mean alive. We'll have to talk with the Lord about that. We get to heaven. It was like, man, those teenage years were like, uh, lots to figure out, lots to deal with. But then you have David and and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, uh, that really shined in their youth for the Lord. The Lord uses all these, and that, all these time for he's in control. You have, the Lord may have, um, for you to be like an octarian, in, octarian, or uh, what do they call them? The, is that what they, the, the did I say oh, j an 80-year-old? <laughs> oh, how do you say Is it octogenarian? Octogenarian is even worse. Than, I mean, it's, it's a big, long word. Uh, God has different times, different seasons. And God, it's pretty so obvious that God has a will for our lives because the um, biggest thing in God's will that he wants for us is to be saved, to receive the Lord Jesus as our Savior, and then to do his will, his, his um, scriptural, practical will, spiritual, just us uh, abiding in him and obeying him each day. So we brainstormed about uh, doing God's will, finding God's will, and I mentioned that, wanted to discuss the will of God in peace. The will of God in peace, because there are, there's a lot of verses it, it, there's a, um, this, I, I've been talking about this guy that said, uh, God doesn't have a personal will for you. You just kind of follow the general, the, you just follow the scriptures and obey the scriptures. And, but 
so obvious from God's will that he works in our hearts, he renews our minds, and one of the big things the Lord does is gives us a peace, and those are all pers very, what, uh, how more personal can you get than peace in your heart? Like, peace in your heart. Uh, only God can give you peace in your heart. And uh, very, very personal. So, want to, uh, Colossians 3 and verse 15 says, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And I had to, that was a verse that, I had to keep coming back to, and still I will come back to, but after Heidi took her life, you just got to let the, it's, it's a challenge to let the peace of God rule, and so we want to talk about the will of God and peace, and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that help us as we look into your word. Pray that you would speak to us. Your Holy Spirit would teach us. Your Holy Spirit would guide me as I preach. And we pray that you bless your word as it goes forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Think of uh, songs like uh, Peace, Peace, God's Peace. And um, there's several in our hymn book. Um, God gives us a peace. We can have a peace no matter what. A peace no matter what. Uh, Jesus told us, we are going to make it back. I don't know if uh, we are going to go over this passage in Colossians 3. I don't know how far we'll get tonight because I've got some preliminary verses. If you turn to Luke chapter 24, we know that the very reason that the Lord Jesus rose from the grave, victorious over sin and death, and the grave, is that he might give us peace. Our peace begins with our salvation. Ephesians chapter 2, so tremendous, so powerful about how uh, we were at enmity with God and the Lord Jesus broke down that wall, that petition between us and God, and he's made peace. He's made peace. He made our peace with God. And in Luke chapter 24, verse 36, when Jesus had risen from the grave and uh, stood in the midst of the disciples, it says, As they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And the Lord still speaks peace to us. He tells us that we have peace with the Father because of his blood, because of his resurrection. And the Lord gives us peace. And it's a peace no matter what. If you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you have that peace with God no matter what. Look in John. So really, the, your salvation is uh, the basis of your peace, your relationship with God, that your sins are forgiven. You have that relationship with God no matter what, and you've entered into that peace with God, and uh, that's your foundational peace. And, but then there's this peace that, um, as you live for God, that, but it all flows for, it all flows ultimately from your salvation. But John chapter 14 and verse 27, Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Yeah, because the world's peace is uh, false peace. The world's Peace is uh, just a bunch of hype. Just a bunch of hype. It's not true. 
Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Whenever I hear that, I think of uh, Sean Hannity starts his show out or ends his show, whatever he does, and he always says, let not your heart be troubled. But he does, it's like, that's hollow. That doesn't mean anything unless you say that Jesus said, ye believe in God, believe also in me. And Jesus has got to be preached behind that promise. John chapter 16 and verse 33, Jesus said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. It's in the Lord that we find our peace. You're not going to find it anywhere else but in the Lord. In the world ye shall have tribulation. The Lord told us. He told us the will of God is not finding an easy path. It's not a life of ease. It is difficult. The Bible tells us that the Christian life is a battle. It is. Uh, we are warring for the Lord. And it's not easy. And Jesus said, in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So, we can have peace no matter what. No matter what. Makes me think of Romans chapter 8, the end of Romans chapter 8, when it says, what shall separate us from the love of God? And Paul gives this list to, you know, Nothing's going to separate us from the love of God. And that gives us peace. Uh, you, can, you have peace. We have peace no matter what. Uh, you might suffer. Paul gives in 1 Corinthians 11. Paul talks about all the things he went through, shipwrecked and in uh, the deep and in... Uh, beatings and being stoned, left for dead, a uh, great big list of all the things he suffered, but he still had peace. He still had peace. And Matthew chapter 5 tells us that we are to rejoice and be exceedingly glad when we're persecuted. We still have that peace. And there's so many stories of saints that stood for the word of God and were martyred for their faith and went to heaven, uh, whether they're being burned at the stake, uh, whatever it may be, singing praises to God, blessing God, because they had peace in their heart because of their salvation and because they knew that they were walking with God. So you can have peace no matter what. No matter what tragedy you face, uh, what heartache, what sorrow, whatever little thing, uh, little thing or big thing that you come up against, whether it's something on the job or whatever it may be, you can have peace. So I got some other verses here stressing uh, peace. And the will, thinking of the will of God in peace, look at Hebrews chapter 13. We may have looked at this verse, but we may not have. I had it written down last week, but I don't know if we had the time. If we looked at this, Hebrews 13, 20. Do you remember looking at this verse? It is tremendous where it says, Hebrews 13, 20, and 21 says, Now the God of peace. Did we look at that last week? Now the God of peace. Just that, you know, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And Jesus is God. And out here we have the God of peace. And God is referred to as the God of peace um, throughout the Bible. But it says, Now the God of peace that brought again the dead from our Lord Jesus. So our peace is through the uh, 
the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. So our peace rests on the resurrection of the Lord and his blood. Our peace can't be based on anything greater than the blood of our great shepherd, the shepherd of the sheep. Then it says, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. So the God of peace guides us to do his will. And what we've been stressing for several weeks now is that doing God's will is personal, it's individual, and we can see here that is the God of peace, the God of peace works in your heart to direct you, to lead you, to guide you, to do his will. It's like, Romans 8 tells us that as many of the sons of God are, how does it say that, led, led by the Spirit. Romans, tells, Romans 8 tells us that if you're a son of God, if you're a child of God, that you will be led of the Spirit. I remember when I was in high school, when I was a teenager, that it all in it just all of a sudden is the Lord's working in my heart that I didn't have any peace not going to church. I didn't have any peace when after uh, I heard messages and messages on uh, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, and you should have devotions every day and. Well, you, and then you start having devotions, then you fall aside, and you try again, and, but you don't have any peace, because the God of peace guides us, he directs us, uh, he works in our hearts and minds uh, through peace, given peace, and it says here, the God of peace, uh, it says, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The God of peace, the will of God and peace. It goes together. When you've got some question, some decision you've got to make, then you want to draw close to God, walk with him. Uh, be a living sacrifice, renew your mind, get in the word of God. Um, everything you can do, everything you just want to be in tune with the Lord. And he'll give you peace in what to do, what is right and what is good, what is well-pleasing. See, doing God's will is God working in you that which is well-pleasing. So when you got a big decision, you say, well, it really doesn't matter which way I go here. You might ask, well, what is going to be well-pleasing unto the Lord? Because that's how the Lord directs. Uh, how is this going to be? Is this going to be well-pleasing in his sight? So the will of God and peace go together. Um, it is... Mention here that God is the God of peace, and it mentions the people. Well, turn to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 mentions the peace of God. The peace of God. And it's not about you making peace with yourself, it's not about you talking to yourself to appease yourself and convince yourself that you're doing right. It is all about what would be well-pleasing to God, what does God want me to do, and is God giving me a peace on this, or am I just convincing myself that this is okay? Because you'll hear over the years, 
ministry, and I'm sure over your life as a Christian, you've had friends, uh, or maybe even yourself, you can remember. I remember a time that I convinced myself this is okay, and I wish I'd never done that. Um, but I've had somebody I, um, I've had a uh, situation, someone said, um, I'm going to get a divorce. God has given me a peace about, God's given me a peace about getting a divorce. Well, God didn't give you that peace because it doesn't match up with his word. And there's been different situations. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to take that job and I have to move away. Well, do you have a good church that you're going to attend? Uh, you're going to be able to be involved. You're going to be still worshiping God. Uh, well, I'll figure that out when the time comes. But I just have a peace. I just have a peace. Well, God's going to lead you. What does that? Look at Proverbs. Keep your finger here in Philippians 4. Proverbs chapter 3 that we've looked at a few different times over the weeks because it's so key to knowing God's will. Proverbs chapter 3, uh, where it says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not unto thy own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, he shall direct thy path. So if you, anybody was going to make a move, then it better it be because it's... Uh, God's going to be acknowledged. God's going to be served. God's going to be glorified because uh, this situation, I can really serve him. Uh, chapter 3 starts out with, My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. So it starts right out saying, you better keep God's word. Don't forget God's word. And then it tells us to trust in the Lord with all our heart. And lean not into our own understanding. Verse 7 says, be not wise in thy own eyes. Well, I've got this figured out. Uh, I, you know, this is going to be good. And then in verse 9, it says, honor the Lord with thy substance, with the first fruits of thy increase. So whatever, however God's going to lead you, direct you, uh, if he's going to give you a peace about doing his will, then... Whatever situation you're going to be in, you're going to be given the first fruits of your, you're going to be tithing. You're going to be given to the Lord. So if somebody puts themselves in a situation where they're not even giving to the Lord, how can, is, um, how can the Lord be in that? It says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Sometimes somebody's going through a hard situation. They're being chastened of the Lord in some way. And they don't like that. Maybe the preaching is, the teaching from God's word is really bothering them because... They're doing something, and they don't think it's wrong, and they don't want to change. So they make a change. Um, well, God says, don't do that. If, if I, God says, if I'm chastening you, don't uh, be weary of correction. Uh, and God says, verse 12, for whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. Even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. So in this passage, God is talking about he's going to direct our paths. We trust in him. He's going to direct our paths. And so now here comes wisdom. Wisdom is so important in seeking God's will, doing God's will. And... The merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, the gain thereof, than fine gold. 
She is more precious than rubies. All the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Man, there's lots of things we can desire. Great big um, houses and boats and uh, whatever it can be. Lots of things we can desire. Wisdom puts them all to shame. God's wisdom just puts them all to shame. We are working up to verse 17. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. All her paths are peace. So if you put that in the context of Proverbs chapter 3, where you don't forget God's word, you trust in the Lord with all your heart, you lean not unto thy own understanding, in all your ways you acknowledge him. Uh, it says he's going to direct your path. And you honor Lord, the Lord with your, uh, your substance, your first fruits. You don't despise his correction. You don't turn away from it. You accept it. You seek wisdom. And then, back when it says in verse 6, he shall direct thy paths. What kind of paths are those? They're paths of peace. There's a peace. There's a peace that passeth all understanding. There's a peace that God gives you when you know you're following him, when you know you're obeying him. When you, is it, uh, we talked Sunday morning about Joseph's integrity. And it's like when you know you're doing right before the Lord, that you are seeking him, that you do desire to please him, that you do want to keep sin out of your life and uh, you, you're fighting sin in your life. And there's a peace in the path the Lord gives you. Uh, all, and it's all path, all paths he'll direct you. To peace. There's peace. So, the will of God in peace. The will of God in peace. Uh, so important. This guy that uh, was that was saying that the will of God is not individual. It's not personal. It's just general. Um, was wasn't thinking about individual peace that God promises. He was overlooking it, or he got he couldn't see the woods for the trees or whatever. He got something, you know, he was doing eisegesis instead of exegesis. He was reading his opinions into the word of God instead of saying, hey, this is what God says. God talks about our hearts and minds. God talks about giving us peace. Let's go, we'll, we'll look at Philippians 4. We're not going to make it, obviously, to Colossians 3. Um, Philippians 4, you know this passage. This passage is so uh, tremendous, and I would say one that we turn to so many times and in difficult times. When it says, be careful, means... Uh, not to be anxious, not to worry. Uh, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace, so that's the, that is acknowledging God in all your ways. That's praying and casting all your cares upon him. And that says, in the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, so keep your hearts and minds to Christ Jesus. So the Lord's going to give you his peace. And we know from passages we just read, he's going to direct us. He's going to lead us. And this verse 8 is really about renewing our minds. Renewing our minds as we walk with the Lord and seek to prove his will. It says, finally, brethren, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? You know, we lie to ourselves all the time. We, we lie. You don't about, uh, you, you're doing nothing for the Lord. Uh, well, uh, we can, well, if you are obeying the Lord, 
what does the law require the flat? So if, how's the, the what does the what's Micah say there? What does he require the? What's that verse? To yeah, that's what the law requires. So God doesn't require you to, uh, you know, change the world. The world, I mean, we're not going to change the world. We're going to walk with God and love God. And we are going to try to lead as many people we can, as we can to the Lord. But uh, just the renewing of our minds, uh, what sort of things are just, what sort of things are pure, what sort of things are lovely, what sort of things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And what's it say? The God of peace shall be with you. The God of peace. And God does direct us and lead us and you might say establish us, settle us, make us steadfast unmovable as he gives us that peace and you say I know I'm walking with God I know I'm doing right and doesn't matter doesn't matter what happens it's like the psalmist said uh, oh God my heart is fixed my heart is fixed and then God keeps us in his paths in his paths of peace we got to stop right there. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, how good your word is. Yeah, we're thankful that your paths are paths of peace. Yeah, even in the midst of uh, tribulations, difficulties, that we do have that peace that passeth all understanding. And yeah, just thank you for your word. Pray that you would guide our prayers tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen.